It's time for a brand new Killjoys here on AfterBuzz TV. We are talking the Lion, the Witch, and the Warlord with special guest Tom Allison. Woo! Stick around. Woo! You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hello and welcome to the Killjoys After Show. Woo! Yeah! We are talking Season 3, Episode 4, The Lion, the Witch, and the Warlord. If you haven't already, go to youtube.com slash AfterBuzzTV. Hit subscribe. We're also on iTunes and SoundCloud. You can subscribe both of those places. I'm so excited for today. I'm Yell Teagle. I am your host. You can find me everywhere at Yell Teagle. That's Y A E L T Y G I E L. I am joined by Stephen Lemieux. Hey guys, it's Stephen Lemieux here, or sorry, Stefan, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> Stephen Lemieux. Based Stephen. on your reading of YouTube comments, guys, thank you for joining <laughs> us. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux, S T P H E N L A M I E U X. Uh, Zake is on his way, but perhaps. <laughs> Not, may I don't know. May not make uh, it. We replaced him with a warlord who's a lot cooler. <laughs> um, but you can follow Zake at that Zake Wilson. <laughs> Spelled Zach. T H A T Z A C H W I L S O N. Um, and I have to say, right off the bat, I cover the strain as well. And I, I finished watching this episode of Kill Choice, and I was just like, man, this show is written and created like a hundred times better than anything the strain's ever put Duh. out there. This show like, it's just, it's like night and day of like, how entertaining and how much you like the characters and how it's all just fun and awesome. I don't know the strain, so I'm not going to poop all over it. But, I will, though. Okay. But I will say this show, made by Miss Michelle Lavretta, the amazing Lavretta who made Lost Girl, who has made a lot of shows that I love. Of course, this show is better than The Strain. Shows better than a lot of shows on TV. It is wonderful. And today we will be having a very special guest joining us very soon. Um, before we get to our special guest, I want to remind us of how this episode worked, right? So Johnny got promoted and immediately got a warrant uh, because he murdered Delsea Kendry. Oh, that's right. Murder. Um, but then, An luckily, intrigue. <laughs> luckily uh, he was saved, as was Dutch, by our favorite warlord, who is joining us now. Oh, no, oh, no he he's disappeared. Gone. He's gone. Where is he? He's putting out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. We're watching Shadow of a Shadow Warlord. Shadow of a Warlord. Where is he? Hello? <laughs> Hello, can you hear us? Hi. Ah! There we go. <laughs> hey, everyone, Tom hey. Allison. Hello. Sorry, guys. Where'd you go? It was my, I forgot, I need to sound thing for my computer. Long story. Anyways, <laughs> I, I didn't have it plugged in. Well, welcome. We're so happy to finally have you. We tried to get Tom on season one. Uh, no, we did. had, we, I thought we had Tom on no, season we had one. And he sent a video. video. Oh, yeah, you're right. We had the video. Right. I was at the lake. You sent packages. <laughs> we received your package. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about our lovely pre. This episode, I think, is hands down my favorite pre episode. Amazing. Probably, probably one of the my best favorite. episodes of the series so far. Yes. Uh, sorry, say that again. I think it was probably one of the best episodes of the series so far because. You wow. have a non-cheesy way of getting the characters to be honest with each other. You have an actual, like, stakes, but in more of, like, a enjoyable manner instead of, like, oh, my God, this place is going to blow up. It's, like, just people screwing with the characters. Yeah. Right. You get right. the intrigue of Delsea and actually get some fallback of what happened at the end of season two. Mm -hmm. or, two. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it kind of tied in a lot of the stuff from the previous episodes and really... What this show does really well is it actually builds on the back of these characters as opposed to just killing them off and then creating new ones. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> well, and so, uh, we're, we're just saying what they say, but it's all, you know, it's Michelle and those writers. That she's, they're all clever. They're, they're clever and fun and kind of kooky. They surprise us all the time. This was absolutely my favorite performance. I, I just <laughs> love when Pri is like kicking ass. So like first we've seen sassy Pri, we've seen, you right. know, sad pre this was pre taking charge being the man kicking ass this was power top pre power top pre. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well kind of yeah the hair the hair was down the lashes were out it was a full system yeah it was great <laughs> that was a great description <laughs> the pin came out <sighs> how dare you 
This episode was, felt like Game of Thrones. It really did. Like it was like, let's forge the alliance. Let's build up our armies. We have to take the North. <laughs> right. Exactly. But they kept throwing the words "gay Vikings" around, and we'd laugh and laugh and laugh. But that's kind of that's what it felt like. It, you were literally hooking up with a wildling. <laughs> you were John that's Snow. That's not relaxed, right? <laughs> no. You were Jon Snow letting the wildlings behind the wall. <laughs> I was Jon Snow in negative. There you go. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh. Right? Dark skin and the white hair. Come on. John Cole? No, let's not go there. John. <laughs> John. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Moving on before I'm ruined on Twitter. <laughs> um, so I want to talk, Tom, a little bit about um, how long, because Pre has the best looks. Everyone in the show looks great, but Pre gets to have the best looks. And you, like, Instagram all of the looks that we've seen so far. I'm an Instagram whore, for sure. I know I follow you. <laughs> um, Everyone in the chat says you're Taham now. <laughs> Taham <laughs> <Alex>. <laughs> You know, there's nothing that a smart apostrophe can't do. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely. Everything gets class here. <laughs> you're Va'arik. You're Ta'am. Right? Paris. So I'm, I'm Paris. Daddy Scrimshaw. Mm. Oh, my God. Um, I want to know how long it took for this look to come together with the hair. <laughs> right, right. Well, well, uh, it wasn't as long as you might think, but it's so detailed because like all that the netting that the hair is put on to has to be glued down and, and like, Every inch of it has to be secured, so if it gets pulled or yanked. But it's amazing. It looks so good. Literally, like, up close, you couldn't see that the hair was not coming out of my head. It was kind of cool. That's amazing. And the hair had, like, um, I don't know what to call them, but, like, metal pieces, the way that, like, Dutch has. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, we sort of have this, this bit of a uh, mythology uh, that it's Pri that actually teaches Dutch how to do her makeup. So that... She's taken trips, tips from him, but he doesn't wear the hair. But when he does, you see little bits of, oh, there's daddy. He's like her, he's like her drag mother, kind of. <laughs> I, I really like that. And I think that it absolutely is. Uh, it's now canon. That is now a but, thing. <laughs> like, totally. Look at how fabulous she looks. It's like, who taught her how to do that? Look at Pri. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is that is kind of true, because if you look at, like, the bar, Pri's bar is the base of operations. Mm -hmm. Even now, after the War of Old Town and everything going on, <laughs> yeah. they're still just having their fun times at Pri's bar, and you're using your escape hatch to get, get out of there. Mm -hmm. So I also like that they tied in um, that the escape hatch goes through the ruins of the facility where Jelko was. Right. Jelko. It was a Jelko move. <laughs> Keeping Jelko. those ruins around. <laughs> Jelka ruins, Jelka remove. <laughs> going into He's this awesome. going into this season, the season, the season opens with you kind of part of their team and doing a run and having all that craziness happen. Were you kind of surprised with how the season opened and then how you got like your own episode two three weeks later? Uh not surprised. I mean, I was delighted, for sure. I figured it's pre had to be somehow involved in something, landing inside them some way. So I, I kind of saw the, the team part happening, but the episode, I didn't see that as a thing. I thought he'd be around doing bits and pieces, but a whole episode with his backstory and, and getting to see... We get to see so much of Pre in that episode. I was thrilled and giddy like a 12 year old girl at a carnival. <laughs> um, I uh, love that we got to see at the beginning of the season, Pre was running and fighting and now we like really saw him kick ass alone without backup. It was right. him against all the gay Vikings. And um, I, I, I believe, I'm predicting, but I believe that Pre is now really like gonna be fighting with them. I'm trying to get you to spill secrets that we're gonna get every episode Pre and Alvis and uh, Fancy are gonna be part of the team, right? Maybe. <laughs> I tried. Um, yeah, you tried. You know, I mean, certainly, yeah. I mean, they, it, it, you know, you can't open that can of worms and then put them all back in again. But uh, but there's it's so much to get into ten episodes. So it's a lot of there's certainly some tag teaming. We get to see nice features of you know, some some fancy stuff, some Alvis stuff. Like we get to see a little bit of everyone, plus there's new characters in there. So there's a mix, but certainly as we get closer to the war, we get a lot more of the company um, kicking all kinds of ass and doing all kinds of shit to get it all happening. Um, so you are uh, working opposite of Mac Fife for this episode as Lachlan. Had you two worked together before this or was this the first time meeting? 
No, we hadn't. We knew each other from the business, but we hadn't actually worked together. So when I found out it was him, I was delighted because I knew of him and what he's been doing, and I'm a fan of his work. Uh, and we had a great time. Great time. Laughed and laughed and laughed. Uh, kissed and kissed and kissed. <laughs> Uh, you know, shot each other. It was like, it was a bit of everything. Whose makeup took longer, his or yours? Uh, definitely mine. He had, that was actually his hair. Was it? <laughs> yeah. Was it actually oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He totally. was on Dark Matter this season as well. He's amazing. He has great hair. Yeah. I just know that in uh, in uh, IMDb, he's very clean shaven, and I was like, how did they do that? Yeah, yeah. He he had he had grown it up for something, or was going into something where he needed it. I forget, but he had this great mane, so he was kind of like you know, powder, powder, dirt, dirt, and I was all. I make up, I make up, ooh, uh, pat, 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 glue, glue, glue. David Coverdale. <laughs> nice work. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so it's me in the chair for a long time, watching people come in and out. Hi, bye, hi, bye. Yeah, almost done. Yeah, oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Pre had his, his new boy toy and his old boy toy in this episode. Um, I know which one I prefer, um, but uh, which one was a better kisser? Well, I didn't actually kiss uh, Garrett. I assumed that you practiced and got, you know, the relationship close. Just uh, in case, just in case. Let's warm it up. Yeah. No, we didn't actually have a, a, chemistry. a kiss thing. It wasn't laid in exactly how deep that's gone or how much it's going to go yet. So we'll have to see in future episodes. Uh, but certainly, I, 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 I couldn't believe when I was reading the script for the first time going, wow, big kiss, great. And then we shoot each other, very funny. It's great. And then at the end, Wow, big kiss. Wow, wow, big kiss. Wow. <laughs> and it was sort of ongoing. That made me laugh. <laughs> and, you know, I, I love that uh, with Garrett, we went from stabbing to stabbing. Mm-hmm. So is, is <laughs> just to confirm, like, is pre-gay or is pre-bisexual or just polyamory? Like, what is his, what is his you thing? You know, I, I, <laughs> we certainly don't see pre with, a lady necessarily, but I think Pree's whatever he wants to be. That's what I was kind of yes. feeling. I didn't know if they had, like, said anything. We haven't said it out loud, but I think, especially in Michelle's world, which I love that Michelle lets everything be so fluid. There's no label of this and that, that you have to be this, you have to be that. Uh, and I think Pree, Pree is whatever suits his fancy. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> I know ship <laughs> Pree and fancy. fancy. Pree and fancy. <laughs> Fans Pree. He's, I think he's more of a sensual being where he flows wherever he feels it. I think that he enjoys, clearly, as Dutch says, he has a type, <laughs> you know, big and beefy. So there's, you know, if, he go, if he's going to go gay, he's going to go real sassy gay. <laughs> you know? And if he goes for a lady, I, you know, who knows? Is it like a real feminine lady? Who, who knows what he'd go for? Because you know? he's also got that thing going on, you know? Like, I, I love that, that from the beginning, it didn't make him specifically girly and how he sounds. I didn't put, pitch him really high and make him, you know, sassy this way. I want him to feel like he could go wherever he wanted to go. And I feel like wherever he lands, I hope it feels like wherever Pre lands, that's right. And it feels right. Nothing, nothing's out of left field, I feel like. like it, I, I hope so. Yeah. Uh. Like, it's kind of like funny because you're, you're in a space drama Game of Thrones thing. <laughs> A guy lands wearing a gigantic blonde wig, and the first thing that happens is a Viking comes up and kisses him. And you're like, I'm not even surprised by that. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I, it's, I watch it and go, yeah, no, this is why, this is what I'm, this is what I like. <laughs> oh, great, great. And then we're getting, uh, we're getting Zeph and, uh, and uh, Davin's character is kind of creating a bit of chemistry not much so not fun. much like not much like sexual chemistry but more like the characters interacting and actually developing yeah yeah you can almost feel like a bit of like a big brother little sister thing going on there eventually maybe you yeah know? um will we get to see pre interacting with zeph because she was in the bar and pre was nowhere to be found indeed um <laughs> uh um ish sort of <laughs> you know i mean invariably by the end of the season, everyone's sort of interacted with someone or, or everyone somehow just because we're all fighting. So so we, we sort of flow past each other in different places, everyone, you know? So yes, no, kind of. Okay. <laughs> will we will we see Pre interact with Anila? Because they're both very sassy. Oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I am curious, though, because this was a gigantic episode for your character, probably the biggest out of all of the seasons so far. 
Right. Um, is this filming this episode? Is that your favorite moment of the season, or do we still have more to come? That was your favorite moment. There, I mean, that was this episode was great. It had so many the kissing, the the makeup, the fighting. I love. We got to see Pre sort of pull out some some warlord ass kicking, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But there's some stuff that happens later on, sort of the, in, in the last few episodes uh, that I've never gotten to do on camera, and it was really fun. Some kind of big um, action movie kind of stuff. Oh wow! Yeah, that's well, what I'm saying. So, so you did your own stunts for all that, then? They taught oh, you. Oh yeah. Any... Sweet. Oh yeah. If I had hair, it might have been singed a couple of times. Oh. <laughs> Maybe the finger oh, banger. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you think the finger banger? I was just kidding. <laughs> that's me. Is the finger banger making a comeback? That I really want to know. <laughs> Well, not on me. That's someone else's to say. That's someone else's story. Would Pre go Holland just to keep his looks forever? Oh, I think Pre is going to keep his looks forever come hell or high water. So mm -hmm. I don't think he needs the Holland. He's got other ways. He's got Jack. If he can grow his hair like that fast, come on. He's got some secrets that he's not telling anyone about. <laughs> he has to shave. He has to bick it every day. So was that... Literally, Every, every like two hours, he's under the bar. <laughs> that was like a thing, though, right? He actually grew his hair out, like from he grew some his hair out. some means of space means of space hair kind growing. Of space means of like and. <laughs> you went Super Saiyan, and it's just the golden locks. Well, just, flew uh, out. just think it, think it, and it happens. <laughs> I wish I could do that. Kind of amazing. My head yeah. went somewhere else completely. Sorry. Well. Oh. <laughs> Filthy. Well, yes. we're going and to shop for carpets and drapes later. So. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> wow. I'm just picturing that now. All that white with the duck. Okay. Well. But it's still bald in front. <laughs> just, a, just a smart afro. Just a little something. Oh my God. You too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like that I'm blaming you too. When you're the one who brought it up. I know. Never crossed your mind. No. Uh, we'll talk. Let's not talk about his prenus. <laughs> Thank you so much Sorry. for joining us for taking this dumb love filthy, you guys. You're filthy awesome. road. Um, is there anything else that you? I know you do a lot of theater and you travel a lot doing that. Um, is there anything coming up that you would like to make sure everyone knows? Um, if you want to see me in concert, October thirteenth yes. and fourteenth at the Rose Theater in Brampton, here in Ontario, in Canada. Anyone, any Canadians out there? I'm doing a, a, my one man show, a Broadway show. Um, and uh, go to my website, actually, Tom Allen, T, -T H O M Allison com, and it's got. I always keep it updated now with stuff coming up. And if you're around and you know can see me, come see me. Yay! Awesome. Hey. Um, thank you so, so much. And you're everywhere on Twitter at Tom Allison. That's it. And Instagram. Tom, I think it's Tom dash underscore Allison, I think. Yes. But easy to find. I think we need to tell the fans, though, that like out of anyone of the cast, Tom and Tamson are just the most interactive on Twitter. Oh. So like Michelle's very interactive, too, She's but like you two like... As well. Fans, like, if you're enjoying their characters, tweet at them, make funny oh memes, my God, do please. all that kind we of stuff. Love talking to, like, we, we talk about how we love our fans. They're so loyal, and, like, you pick up everything, and they're so excited to be part of it with us that we love chatting with them. Have you stolen anything off set? <laughs> the show hasn't ended yet. You can't steal I, it. I couldn't end. possibly say that out loud <laughs> if I had, but if that wig disappears, they might know where to find it. Okay. <laughs> Um, you have a wig collection, don't you? I actually do. <laughs> I, I think I know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's on. <laughs> I just collect things. I, 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 I've got a tickle trunk full of, like, costumes and things and, you know, auditions and stuff coming up. And I go, huh, red, blonde, bl black. Here we go. <laughs> so, yeah. I like dressing up. It's fun to do parties and auditions. And I get asked to do really weird things for auditions, so I'm always ready. I want the job. I'm not going in there to lose the job. <laughs> well, we are so excited that you have this job on Killjoys. Thanks. We love we love talking to you on Twitter. We oh, love seeing thanks. Pre. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, My pleasure. Thank you. And hopefully we will also talk to you again next season. Um, everybody needs to start tweeting the Renew Killjoys. Listen, it's all about the fans. If you want it, we come back. Mm -hmm. So hashtag Renew Killjoys. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank Amazing. you, Tom.
Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Um, before we move on. Do you want to talk about why tunes i do want to talk about why tunes i want to thank everyone for joining us we know we are on a special night tonight uh that's not my fault but we're on a, actually no it is totally my fault it is 100 percent my fault we're on a special night tonight thank you all for joining us to everyone who is here live we appreciate you being in the live chat steven is keeping an eye on you and um we ask you to do a very simple thing go to itunes hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode especially if we move to special days like this i know I right suck. but um she sucks i know uh make sure you rate and review on itunes and if you do we will read the review live on the air if you like us you can give us five stars and if you don't like us you can give us four stars because the other stars they do not work so don't worry about them um but uh, do you by chance have itunes reviews i have itunes reviews oh well then i'll stop trying to get them uh, from Lanaves, Pri and his boys were a nice digression. So I guess that makes Pri both a fighter and a fracker for freedom. <laughs> I'm glad Johnny and Dutch got their heart to heart breakup and makeup done. And Anila having a super special strand of Holland seems 100% certain at this point. That was my Pri in uh, impersonation. That was your Pri? That was my Pri. Was that not good enough? <laughs> I didn't know. Intonation, why you were good. intonation, not vocals. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, thank yes. you, Lanaves. And then. Uh, this was uh, SBI Glow did it last week during the show, but it showed up on iTunes. And it's every week, Zach Yell and Steven make my Monday morning come enjoyable with their insights and thoughts on one of my favorite sci-fi shows. You always make me laugh, and I wouldn't want to spend time in the quad with anyone else. Aww, thanks. Also, a good way to support the show mm. is to Venmo me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, is to <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> hit thumbs up on the YouTube video. And wait till after this stream is over and comment, because if you can comment, we can see your comments, read mm. your comments, and communicate with you. Unfortunately, the live chat does not save, but I can give some shout-outs right now. Yeah. Jay Ruiz uh, in the live chat, Mr. DStyle09, Sarah Biglow, Renji90998, uh, Jacob Alberts. <laughs> I love how many people in the live chat have changed their name to have an apostrophe after the I've first seen letter. That. We have Jacob Albers. We have Sa'ara Brock. This is amazing. We have uh, well, Sa'ara Biglow's trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> uh, we're waiting on Ng90998. Uh, but thank you guys. <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoy the gimmick that we got going on. <laughs> Everyone's kind of excited that Tom said tickle trunk. <laughs> um, Sarah's proud to be a Canadian, and this show is Canadian. Yeah, it is. And, uh, Sarah Brock is very grumpy with Tom not staying in Vancouver the other week. But still, uh, oh my god, I imagine Pre is immortal like Gwynnon from Star Trek The Next Generation. I like it. Um, fun stuff, guys. This is a fun show. I love our chat. Uh, we need to talk about D Avin and Zeph. Zeph? No, she's just Zeph. Zeph Roth. I assume her do, name do, do, is do. like um, Zephany. I don't know. <laughs> or it's like uh, Zephyr. Like Zeph Zen Zephiner, like Jennifer, but backwards. No, okay. I'm done. Um, so Zaffin is yeah. that their ship name? Zaffin. 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 No. Let's stop. Um, so <laughs> Zeph is trying to help Davin get his bearings on reading the goo. Um, and he goes in and we think for a second, well, I thought for a second that he got seen by Delcia Kendry. And he didn't. But he was seen by Anila because she has a stronger connection the way that uh, my beloved Klein used to. Yeah. Um, what do you think this means? So... Yes. I don't know. Okay. Um, it might be just original Holland, and I'm assuming that's mm. what's in the relic. In the remnant. The remnant. Yeah. The remnant. Rem. Rem 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 oh, okay. Well, so she like figures out that Davin's blood, Davin's blood will open it, right? She like mixes his blood with the goo. No, she just mixes plasma with it. It's just plasma. Was it not blood? I don't think it was blood. I think there was blood. She mixes something with something and then puts it on top. Okay. Take it to the chat. Take it to the cars. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, maybe, maybe there's blood mixed in, but it's just, uh, it's interesting because if, if he's the same as Anila, and remember what she said earlier last episode or two episodes ago, she said there's two strains of Hull and one's a leader and one's a follower. Yeah. At what point will Davin be able to start? being a leader to people who are already Hullen. Mm. And if he creates his own strain, would we get killjoys who are on the side of good who are immortal? 
Because if he can own his own tree yeah. and make his own level six that he's not controlling, he just gives the power of healing to. Right. As long as, I mean, unless they're going to end this season with Anila going down and to Avin being the one who becomes corrupted by power and becoming the next big villain for season four. Ooh. But I could, see, I could see them playing that if he can control them. But at the same time, two sides of the same coin, wouldn't she be able to control them as well? Because it's the same bio network. Uh, I don't know. I think... I don't know. I don't know. I'm so excited to find out, but I have no idea. It's, my head just got so... Like, what if it's this? What if it's this thing? And I got very confused. Um, so she opens the remnant, and inside there's something. It looks like a different kind of plasma. Okay. It looks like a test tube full of something. There's a test tube full of something. It, it looked gross. It, look, it looked like, like this is pastrami. It might be full of sophical... <laughs> Uh, okay. Bad um, joke. Um, maybe it's Anila's blood. Maybe. Ooh, I like that. That if we poison that, then we can poison the goo. Yeah, like maybe that's like a sample of the original Hullen. Ooh, I like that theory. Um, I hate to say this because I hated her at first, but I'm going to say it. I really liked Zef by the end of this episode. Yeah, I actually didn't. I didn't mind her character at all. I thought it was. I thought it worked out pretty good. I don't like when shows make me like someone I didn't like to. Be I'm gonna with. hate her if she's like, oh, I know how to open this. Let me hide it from them. If I, we go with that storyline, I don't think we will. But there was like a moment at the end where I'm like, she's not gonna tell them. I don't think she would keep it from them. I think when she closed it, she was like, I am the best, and she's definitely seems like a gloater. Yeah, she is, but then her ego has always been the downfall, so if she knows how to open it and is playing pretend that she doesn't so she can come in in the clutch and figure it out, mm. like wait for a moment of suspense where she has to figure it out so she can look like the hero. So mm. she puts everyone at risk yeah, because yeah. she already knows, but she's trying to wait for the moment to be right. like, oh my God, look, look I figured I it out. Day. Yeah, Yeah, I could see that. I'll go back to hating her then. <laughs> Um, so that's, you know, Davin's storyline was very much the, like, not, not as progressive. This whole episode was 100% about Johnny and Dutch getting through their stuff, but also giving us this amazing pre-backstory. So, like, Davin, yeah, he went, he saw Neela, they talked. Coffee talk. <laughs> hey, Neela, how you doing? Oh, I'm going to find you soon. Oh, yeah. thank you. I'll tell see you later. I'm coming. Tell I'll tell Dutch. I'll give you your love. <laughs> I'm getting verklempt, so I'm going to head out. Go ahead and kiss me. <laughs> Send my holograph out of the memories. Um, I like that she has the power to just him out. That was great. Yeah, she's got a lot of power, it looks like. I'm really excited to see more of what she can do. What do you think of Bunyan? Banyan? Banyan. What do you think of Banyan? Okay, so when Turin and Banyan have this conversation where she kind of points out, he's like, I let them be stupid, and then I fix it. And then she was like, that's the problem. <laughs> I, was like, I, I, I totally see where he's at because he's on our side, and he, he's always been lenient with our team, even though he's always been a jerk to them. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree that she's right. Like, she's right. That's why bad things happen was because he wasn't in control. But I think that eventually she'll get onto their side. I don't think she's going to stay... Uh, she's going to be a thorn in their side until they're like, okay, here's what's happening, idiot. And then she'll join them. What do you think? I think they're going to think she's Holland until next episode where they test her. Mm, you think they still think she's Holland? Because we were like, she's not Holland. Oh, I don't think she's Holland at all. But I think they probably do still think she's Holland. I think they're going to test her. Mm. And she's going to be like, what the hell are you guys doing? What the hell are you guys What the hell are you guys doing? And that's when they'll have to tell her. And, like, they'll chop off something. They'll, like, use somebody as an example and, like, cut somebody's chest open and it'll just heal up. And she'll be like, what's going on? Um, you're like, I don't do that. I don't do that. Don't do it. Um, I, I think they uh, – I think they'll bring her into the fold next episode. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, especially with what Dutch says at the end of this episode, which is we're going to take back the rack. Um, Return of the rack. Nice. Return of the rack. <laughs> um, I think because Sarah I really... Bigelow says I think she dies next episode when they invade the rack. Oh, Banyan? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I would love it if they're like she's Holland and then they shoot her in the heart and she I'm dies. Shipping... They go, whoops. <laughs> I'm shipping Turin and Banyan so hardcore. Really? Hell yeah, man. 
You or someone in the chat? I am. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like Turin. I kind of would really like to see Turin become Pre's bitch. It would be so good. Right? Couldn't you imagine that? I, it, it'll never happen, Yell, but you have you can have your imagination. Thank you. You're allowed to have that. I imagine Pre with a lot of people on I'm, this show. I'm sure you do. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Then there's uh, the great scene we get. Let's give them truth serum with uh, basically water with dry ice so it <laughs> foams. Yeah. Let's throw them in a cage mm -hmm. and let's have them talk truth to each other. It was, I think it's so cute that um, Lachlan's like whole plan was first they have to fight each other but not hurt each other. And then they have to, um, what was the second one? Oh, put together weapons. And then, Blindfolded. Yeah. And then they have to talk it out. Like, what kind of warlord are you? You suck at this. That's, if you're going to have them battle to the death, battle to the death. Let's just say he's very in touch with his emotional side. <laughs> he's like, okay, guys, I see some animosity here. <laughs> yeah. This is like warlord therapy. <laughs> First, okay, you're a badass. Put your gun together. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you're also a badass. Take the emblem off. Yeah. All right, now we're going to hurt each other. We're going to work through this. So here's your tab of LSD. Yeah. Here's your tab of LSD. And let's just say what's on our minds and get it out there <laughs> while gas is filling the room. Okay, now the guardian from the mummy decided to just. That was not um, I know Oded Fair. I know it wasn't Oded Fair. Because Oded Fair is Israeli. And that man was not. Correct. That is all. I liked that new guy, though. <laughs> I think we're going to see him again. I think they'll talk to him and explain to him about the hull, and he'll be like, I'm in. No, I don't think they'll even have a scene. I think just later on, when it's actually like the rack versus places, mm -hmm. I think they'll just run into him again, and he'll be like, eh, sorry about last time. I'm amazing, though, or something <laughs> like that. Like, he'll just, they'll probably throw in a one-liner. Yeah. I liked the uh, the interrogation with him, though, where it's, not like even like high stakes. It's just we're going to drop you on your head over and over again. <laughs> I really like this new boyfriend of Bree's. The one he's not sure about. He's, I really liked him. He's just wanted... a normal guy. I think that's the cool thing. Is it like yeah. they're not trying to be like, oh, he's a space guy who's like doing all sorts of stuff. No, he's and just he's... this jerk face that got, you know, forced into loving Pre. Yeah, you know, that's what happens. That's what happens when you meet Bree. <laughs> um... I, uh, he reminds me a lot of a character that was actually in Lost Girl. That was, uh, another big, strong, burly dude who, you know, was the muscle, but was also just a gentle, gentle giant. And so it really reminded me of him. I believe his character's name is Bruce. And I, I really liked him too. Uh, I think we should head into predictions because there's so much to talk about. So let's hit it. What did you think Johnny was going to say when she said... Why did you come back then? Because he said that we can't win this war. He, we can tell that his mind is in like a huge state of doubt of whether or not they can do anything about this. And she says, well, why did you come back then? And then they pass out. What do you think his answer was going to be? For her. I think he came back for her, for Dutch. Okay. I think when he has that conversation with, um, with Zeph and explains that like they will run into a burning building if he tells them to. Yeah. And he knew that she needed him and he needed her. I think he came back for her. Aww. Um, so let's look at the let's look at the game of Space Thrones right now. Okay. So we have the um mods. Yeah. The hack mods. So they're kind of It really is super Game of Thronesy. I'm telling you. No, I know you said it and I was like, yeah, yeah, but now I'm like, yeah. So you have Anila is Cersei. Uh-huh. Anila's running her craziness over there. We're going to keep this as spoiler free as yeah, possible. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then you have uh, you have Daenerys Dutch Targaryen, who's running her thing right here. Mm -hmm. Johnny's her little Tyrion. Yeah. <laughs> um, De Avins varies. And uh, the nerd is the nerd. I'm just attaching references. Okay. So um, they're taking out the whole end, but then they've formed these alliances, right? So we have the hack mods who are doing their thing mm -hmm. with, what's her new name now? Not Clara. Ollie. Ollie. So we have Ollie over there. She's like, okay, whenever you guys need us, we'll be there. Yep. Then you have, now we have the, the Orphans, or whatever they're called, right? The uh, Gay Kings, is everyone The called. Gay Kings. The, the, gay, the gay Vikings. Vikings. They're over here. So now we have that army. We have yep. this army. Uh, who else do we have on their side? I think we, side? we could also have a bunch of blind people. 
from the from the town. I think if they we said come help us, they'd be like we're in. Well, no, they didn't really end on the best of terms. Remember, they escaped. Yeah, still. Okay, fine. So blind people, we got the blind armada. Yeah, why They're not? They're really good snipers. They they bring a lot to the table. Um, um, all of Old Town, sorry, like all of their all original. of Old Town, all of the monks. Yeah. Uh, Marvin in the chat says that that uh, Marvin thinks that Johnny would have said to die with you. Got it. I think that's cute. It's a good one. Oh, um, uh, you're right. The monks. The, the monks, monks are another one. We have the ships. The ships. Oh yeah, we have all those ships. We have all those ships. We're gonna have the rack soon. But um, to go back to the, I guess not the blind people, but Quinn, the girl that they saved, that they put with the monks. Maybe she'll oh, yeah. be the she'll, blind people. She'll, yeah, she's she's there. Yep. So I mean, we have a good amount of people plus Klein, because Klein's a wild card. In terms of like what he's set up beforehand. Oh, uh, what he set up. I was like, I think I think it's been established, unfortunately, that he's dead. But prediction wise, he might come back. But prediction wise, creating your army with this specific brand of Holland that he locked in the remnant, if yeah. that's what that is, would leave them another weapon to use against sure. Mila. So I mean, we've been like we've been subtly building these alliances mm -hmm. to go attack King's Landing. <laughs> Wait, do we also have uh, I guess they're the people of Old Town. Okay, go on. So, no, that's it. So, I mean, I think... Yeah. I mean, where's Jelko at? I want to see Jelko again. <laughs> you want to see Jelko? Yeah, he's Littlefinger. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely! <laughs> but this is great. It's fantastic. Um, so next week, we're taking back the rack. We see Fancy Lee. We see the other nerds. The other two boys are also there. So, you know, they're helpful, possibly. Um, and a big announcement. I think we, we teased last week that we'd have a big announcement today. I don't think we should talk about it yet, though. I'm going to talk about it. You done goofed up, A.A. Ron. Uh, but guys, next week joining us on the show will be the one and only Johnny Jacoby. Sean Ashmore. Aaron Ashmore. <laughs> I think they also have a sister. She will not be joining us. Aaron Ashmore will be joining us uh, here. And... I'm going to say it because it's happening later on this season. We will also have Tamsin, uh, who play, who's the voice of Lucy, and um, Morgan Kelly, who is Alvis. And I'm working on uh, Sean Back also coming back. Um, Fancy. Fancy Lee. So, yes. Oh, man. Predictions in the chat. I don't know if you're seeing it, but Sarah think Zep is Holland, yeah. thinks Sarah is Holland. I don't think Zep's Holland at all. I don't think... I apologize. Possible. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible. Um, but yes, Aaron Ashmore. God, way to confuse everybody. Somebody said, what about Pree's warlord boyfriend? He's obviously... Uh, what's the name of the guy who's got a crush on Brienne of Tarth? Oh, yes! That's who he that is. Guy. As soon as I saw him, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, does that make uh, Pree Brienne of Tarth? <laughs> I kind of... I really, really like... Your, um, your... Tormund. Tormund. <laughs> you looked it up? Yeah. He yeah. doesn't have a name. He's the guy who looks at Brienne all creepy. No, Tormund. Um, <laughs> I like it a lot. We need to make a Killjoy's Game of Thrones crossover and just, like, assign roles to everybody. I have everybody. a feeling someone's going to have an art project to work on. That's you. Oh, I was going <laughs> to look at the audience and make them do it. All right, audience, you Photoshop do it. Photoshop their faces into Game of Thrones. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us. Steven, uh, Zach couldn't make it, so find him at, at that Zach Wilson. Steven, where can people find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux, S-T-P-H-E-N-L-E-M-I-U-X. Also doing The Strain After Show Sundays at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And every episode of The Strain, we do the little skit now where I wrote a sketch and... We basically do a script reading, mm -hmm. but it's set in like the, the world of the strain, but with the logic of the strain. That's terrible logic. So it actually is really fun and funny. So check that out. Google uh, or look up on YouTube the strain logic. The first episode was called um, Strigoi Holes, <laughs> and the second episode was called Children and How Children Affect Your Life in the Apocalypse. It's pretty good. So check that out. Uh, and yes, we will be back at our normal time for Killjoys next Sunday at... 5 p.m. Pacific, 3, 4, 5. Yes, yep. We, we both forgot. No, I just, <laughs> I know that I arrive here at 3 p.m. and do all of the ABTV sci-fi summer shows. That is Winona Earp, followed by Dark Matter, followed by Killjoys. Uh, if you want to see interviews from Comic-Con with the cast of Winona Earp 
and the cast of Dark Matter. Check those out. I've tweeted out the links. They're available at Yell TV, Y A E L dot TV. Also on YouTube at Yell Teagle, Twitter, Instagram at Yell Teagle, Y A E L T Y G I E L. And we'll see you next time. <gasps> Bye. Wait, what's next? From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The warrant is all. Jelko. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.